Hi, I'm Jason Wachab, founder and CEO of Mind Buddy Green, the best selling author of Wealth, and your host for the Mind Buddy Green podcast, where I'll be bringing you deep and insightful dialogues with some of the greatest minds in wellness. If you like what you hear, please give us a five star review, comment, and share with your friends and family. And don't forget to visit us at mindbuddygreen.com for your daily dose of wellness. Thanks and enjoy the podcast. Like many people, it's taken me years of experimenting with food, adding ingredients here, cutting them out there to find the perfect diet. I go heavy on the plants, light on the grains, and medium on the healthy fats to feel energized, happy, and alert. And I can find them all on Thrive Market, the largest online marketplace in the country that sells exclusively non-GMO groceries shipped straight to your door. They're offering an amazing deal right now. Get $60 of free organic groceries plus free shipping. Go to thrivemarket.com slash mindbuddygreen now. Their homepage lets me filter through a wide selection of thousands of products based on my values. I just click a few buttons to shop for their widest assortment of certified organic, non-GMO, paleo-friendly foods out there. I don't know where else I can access my go-to snacks like Simple Mills flourless crackers, pantry staples like pasture-raised ghee, and organic apple cider vinegar, and treats like heavenly organic chocolates all in one go. I just add my weekly haul to my cart, check out, and get back to my life. Oh, and did I mention that their prices are insane? They cut out the middleman to offer up the 50% off items sold. And now they're giving you an extra $60 in free groceries and free shipping. Just visit thrivemarket.com slash mindbuddygreen now. So to all of our vegan, gluten-free, and paleo listeners out there, welcome to a new shopping experience that makes it easier than ever to live with specialized diets. Again, check out thrivemarket.com slash mindbuddygreen for $60 in free groceries. There is no one other place I can go that has such an enormous variety related to the way I eat and the way I live. And I know if it's on Thrive Market, it's going to be good for me and my family. Hey, everybody. I just want to take a quick moment to thank you all for listening to the podcast and to say that we want to listen to you. So if you have any questions, any dream guests, we are all ears. I would love to hear from you. So ask me anything. And stay tuned for the answers or your dream guests on this very podcast. Send your questions to podcast at mindbodygreen.com. That's podcast at mindbodygreen.com. And I look forward to hearing from all of you. Thanks so much. And let's go back to the podcast. Paige Barasa is a licensed acupuncturist, herbologist, and the founder of Shen here in New York City. After studying holistic nutrition and psychology, Paige became fascinated with the psyche's link to illness and went on to pursue her Master's of Science in Traditional Chinese Medicine, focusing on treating psycho-emotional disorders and pain. She prides herself on blending ancient Chinese medicine with modern science and adding humor and reality to treat regular people who don't know how to pronounce quinoa. Paige is also an instructor of the Essential Guide to Acupressure, which you could find on Mind Body Green. Paige, welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. So we have to start with all the letters. You've got so many letters after your name. We yeah. love people. At Mind Body Green, we love people of lots of letters after their name because that generally means they're qualified to, to yeah. really talk about what they're talking about to versus a lot of the other population just has an opinion and no qualification. So what? Do, totally. let's walk through all the letters you have after your last name. Okay. Okay. So it's Paige Barasa and then it's MSTOM, which is Masters of Science in Traditional Oriental Medicine. And then for some reason, the designation also requires you to put licensed acupuncturist after that. So MSTOM LAC is just like, I do acupuncture good. So that's that's the first one. And then RHN is Registered Holistic Nutritionist. So that was a um, course that I did in Canada. So they give you RHN. And then do you guys have CAS too? I think we do. Yeah, CAS is... (laughs) This is so ridiculous. So like, it sounds like a trade. It sounds like CES, the trade show in exactly. Las Vegas. Exactly. Yes, I'm actually into tech. That's just my, <laughs> my. I do programming on the side. So CAS is clinical Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic specialist. Wow. So yeah. let's just walk through what you had to do. So Chinese okay. medicine TCM, well, traditional Chinese medicine TCM is, right. is is no joke in terms of commitment and education. No. So 
just tell people what that entails. Okay. So yeah, so I mean, I think a lot of people think it's like a weekend course and you pick up like, you know. <laughs> it's an immersion. Yeah, totally. It's you know, a workshop. I did a YouTube course and picked up some needles on Amazon yeah. and that was it. But it's actually really funny because it's it's different state to state, but I went to school in California. So you need, um, you need to basically have done like a bachelor's degree or have kind of uh, done a bunch of sciences. Um, and then that qualifies you to get into, you do the bachelor's and then that qualifies you to get into the master's of science. And then the master's of science in traditional oriental medicine in uh, California is like a four year full time, you know, full mm-hmm. load, you know, summers off, like, it's no, like going to college again. It's crazy though, the amount of stuff that they cram into that four years. Like it should be like probably six years, but nobody's going to go to school for six years after they've already done four. So they just say four and then you bleed for four years, but it's <laughs> incredible. And the amount of knowledge, I mean, you're cramming in 5,000 years of traditional Chinese medicine stuff. So four years, you know, so what you is, so TCM, so we'll just go with TCM, yeah. traditional Chinese medicine. For those who aren't familiar what it is, what what is TCM? So TCM is like, it's easiest to think of it as an umbrella, okay? So you have traditional Chinese medicine, which is your umbrella. And then underneath that, you have acupuncture, mm-hmm. acupressure. You have Chinese herbal medicine, which is all like the weird roots and twigs and stuff that we can make into teas that smell like feet, but make you <sighs> so much better. And then you have cupping, which thank God for Michael Phelps making that a huge hit yep. years ago. Like big shout out to him. Thank you from the industry. <laughs> um, and then gua sha, which is another kind of um, physical, you know, massage and, and scraping technique, which relieves toxins um, and the nutritional therapy. So traditional Chinese medicine is sort of the all encompassing term that that envelops all of that stuff. And then you can do any of those underneath. So what got you interested in this in the first place? Um, so that's, <laughs> that's a funny story. I think I was always interested in medicine and wellness and kind of making people better. Like I can remember as a kid, if you separated the amount of playtime I had in a pie chart with like the time that I was spending playing mommy or like wife or Barbie versus like doctor or wizard (laughs) or like weird psychic, um, it would be like the whole pie. (laughs) Like there was never like me with a bunch of Barbies, like taking the kids to school. It was always like, you know, grinding up leaves and making my little brother eat them. Um, so I think it was sort of an interest from a young age. And then, uh, around high school, my mother moved us into unknowingly uh, a, a very densely populated Chinese neighborhood. Where and was this? Where, where were you? In Vancouver. So okay. yeah, I grew up in Vancouver, Canada. Oh, that's right. That's the connection yeah, yeah. to Megan Bruno. Yeah, friend, yeah, 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 totally, totally, and all things Canadian. <laughs> um, so my mother moved us into this neighborhood, not having looked at like zoning, and I show up for the first day of high school, and I'm like one of six white kids in an all like all Chinese wow. school. And this was a really interesting time too, because it was when Mao and, and communism was taking back over Hong Kong. So anybody with any wealth and all of like the businessmen there that had like, you know, accrued a, a bunch of wealth and had their families and wanted to make sure that that was going to be protected and okay, moved over the Pacific Rim and, and transplanted in Vancouver. <laughs> so Vancouver, you know, between I think 1990 and 2000, um, I think 94 to 96 were the really hot years, just became like, you know, I think right now it's 49 or 50% Asian. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. I know, there's your fun And then the other half is a little lemon or? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) This is Asian, this is chip. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, basically. So so we moved into this neighborhood and and she had no idea and we rolled up and, you know, she always said she could spot me coming across the field because I was the only blonde kid. And (laughs) so I was just immersed in this Asian culture and, you know, to the point where like... (laughs) I was a minority. I was like bullied and like thrown sticky buns at. Like it was very, very Chinese. And so, um, you know, they were speaking Mandarin and Cantonese. And so, you know, being around all of that, I made friends. And my best friend at the time would invite me over after school. And her mom's making like chicken feet something soup, right? (laughs) And like she's, you know, everybody's yelling at each other (laughs) in, in Cantonese. And, you know, then I look over and there's like some woman that looks like she's 800 years old on the couch. And I'm like, who's that? You know, and Jen says, okay, well, you know, that's my great, 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 great grandma. (laughs) I'm, I'm going, all right, well, how are my aunts and uncles dying of cancer? And, you know, they have Parkinson's and cirrhosis and 
my family really, when I was a kid, went through like so many deaths. I almost went to more deaths than, or more deaths, more funerals than weddings. And wow. then you go to your best friend's house and they're like, I can't wait for my great, great, great grandmother to die so I get my own room. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so to me, there was that, that was a huge mental shift around like 13 through 15. I was like, we're not doing this right, you know. And so what, what were some of the things you were seeing besides longevity where you're like, hmm, I think I want to like study this and, and help people? Yeah, I think like, you know, seeing the different every time we coughed or had, you know, a sneeze or something like her mom was giving us some weird tea and then like she was doing fire cupping, you know, we're sitting there like watching <laughs> Save by the Bell and having some weird like Chinese snack instead of whatever, like pizza and Coca-Cola and sure. everything all the other kids were having. Um, and, you know, she's cupping our backs or whatever it was. And it was just like, okay, this this family is vibrant and they don't get sick and they live clearly till like 407. <laughs> and so like, who doesn't want this, you right. know? So that, I think that really made an impression. And so if we go back to like TCM, you mentioned it's 5,000 years. Yeah, so like we have, Like explain like, you know, okay, so that it's the, the family, the umbrella of TCM, and then you've got, you know, it's like the parent-children relationship. You've got acupressure, acupuncture, cupping and herbs and so forth. Like yeah. just like what are the, like for those, like what is, T it's this ancient system based upon? So like, yeah, basically, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can kind of take any one of those subcategories and like go into it, but... For example, I can just kind of give you acupuncture and acupressure. Yeah, let's like, go through all of them. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, cool. So acupuncture and acupressure are based on a system of meridians and points on the meridians. Okay, so I think everybody knows or most people know what chi is, right? So well, it's, talk, it's energy. It's the, the energy yeah, that flows through you. It's which, your vital life force. Which we had, you know, Dr. Frank Lipman, would, he thinks chi is mitochondria. Okay, yeah. So I, like the energy that... Yeah, I think it... Honestly, it's so up for debate and I don't like to like pigeonhole it because sure. it means something so special to everybody. So I kind of like to keep it open to whatever anybody interprets, interprets it as. But I would say like vital life force or energy that you can't quite see. Yep. Um, so this chi runs along all of these channels that kind of go up and down and across our body. And uh, there are 12 major meridians or channels, and then there are a couple extra channels. And on these meridians, each one of the acupuncture points is almost like a little rest stop where the chi pools. So you can have like, say the large intestine channel, which kind of comes up your index finger and um, and, and goes like across where LI4 is, where, you know, I'm always showing people to push LI4 for LI4 is in between yeah, your, that's your little thumb and your index finger. Exactly, and that little webbing, and yeah. it's quite tender. But that's like the main point for pain. LI4, right? so if we're in pain, just like LI4. LI4. Yeah. In between, anyone can do this. You don't even need to, even though it's audio, it's between index, yeah. the little web between your index finger and your thumb. If you're making a loser symbol, <laughs> okay, it's that webbing. <laughs> I, I can remember that. It's tender. Everyone knows that. Yeah. Spot. Okay. Yeah, and everybody knows that symbol from high school. So that's the easiest way to kind of to to think about it. Is these channels are like highways, and then each one of the points is is sort of like a rest stop on that highway. So you know, some channels have you know eighteen twenty points on it. Some channels have you know sixty seven points on them. So each channel is a little bit different, and each channel accesses a different internal organ. Mm -hmm. So what we do with an acupuncture session is check the pulse, look at the tongue, and those are our diagnostic tools. So like feeling the pulse gives us a relative indication to the amount of chi and blood in your body. And then also like where it's stuck, okay? And that's that's what I love looking for. Like, you know, where are you stuck? Where are not only you stuck in, in life, but also like where is your body needing a little support? Where does it need a little push? Where does it need a little tonification? So that's what we're doing with the pulse. We're checking the pulse, seeing where you need a little support and assistance, and then looking at the tongue, and we're diagnosing different organs from that as well. And then what we do is we make up... I love when they do the tongue. I know, right? It's like... The... <laughs> yeah. It's such a great party trick. Like I'll, go, like, I'll go in and, you know, somebody doesn't believe in something. I'm like, show me your tongue. And I'm like, do you have crazy Game of Thrones nightmares? And throw off the covers <laughs> with night sweats. And they're like, I'm coming in. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> 
So, so those are our diagnostic tools, great party tricks, and really, really helpful in looking at what somebody is dealing with. Uh, and then from there, we kind of put together like a little recipe, and that's the acupuncture protocol. So say like somebody has, um, they're getting over a cold or flu, and they're having like a lot of coughing and phlegm. So then we're gonna look to the lung channel and we're gonna say, okay, what points, you know, arrest wheezing, arrest coughing, what points deal with the phlegm that's caught in your lungs? And we're gonna put together this little recipe and put in, you know, anywhere from 12 to 24 points. Mm -hmm. That's a super loose rule. Um, and then that addresses that. And so the cool thing is that even though we're doing the acupuncture, which is with needles, the same idea is applied in acupressure, which mm -hmm. is just you putting pressure on points. Sure, which I love. Yeah. I, I've tried everything. Like, you name it, I've tried it. I've yeah. even seen, like, iridology. Yeah, I've, yeah, do, yeah. I've done, like, every crazy thing. You. And, like, I don't love acupuncture, but I do love acupressure. Yeah. And I think it's one of those things, too, as we're talking about this. Like, if anyone's listening, they're like, it sounds weird. I don't buy it. Yeah, like, yeah. Until you try it, like I remember one of the first times I went years ago. Yeah. So I have a, the example, I have a dislocated shoulder. Mm -hmm. and I never got surgery after it was like my, when I was done playing college and that was it. I'm like, I'm not going to really play. Like right. why get surgery? There's just certain ranges of motion. I won't do. Yes, and I'm totally. fine. <laughs> uh, but I'll never forget. I was like a pressure point in like my toe and then my shoulder started like yeah, twitching yeah. like crazy. I'm like, oh my God. This is real. <laughs> yep. Yep. Totally. Like, how did you do that? That's There's no needles up here. So true. There's neither no pressure point. There's no needles. And I was like, oh, this stuff works. I think, yeah. I think in school they should really split it up into like 3.9 years of the traditional, you know, pathologies and, and ideologies and, and teaching you the basics and then I think there should be like a three-week course of like things to really blow people's hair back you know and that'll be your like push on this point and somebody's nose starts to run yeah. or like push on this point and their migraine goes away the the magic points that we just get like an immediate reaction well I want to come back to the magic points but let's go oh, to let's can't give you all the good <laughs> stuff <laughs> well everyone you have an amazing acupressure class on Mind Buddy Green which yeah. we'll, we'll talk about but going back so acupressure difference between acupuncture so yeah so the same rules apply so it's same meridians same same points, um, you know, same idea of trying to figure out what's deficient and boost that or what's excess or stagnant and kind of drain or smooth that. But instead of with the needles, which is acupuncture, yep. um, you're doing it with pressure. So And the person's there versus yeah acupuncture it's like you go in you go on the table they put the needles in and they then say they, see you later yeah, exactly. maybe you get headphones maybe you don't. Yep. Yep. But acupressure it's like the person's there touching you physically and they yeah. don't leave and yeah, which is like beautiful. Which to me is amazing. It's like, and you have, when you get a great healer like you, it's like you feel that, or a partner, it's like your partner could do it, your spouse, so your girlfriend, easy. boyfriend, like anyone can do it. And that's like amazing. That's why I love acupressure so much, is because it's so accessible. Yeah. Like my boyfriend doesn't know what a green juice looks like or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what broccoli looks like. And, you know, he certainly has never taken any massage. Like this is a real guy's guy, you know. Yep. But if I show him, you know, a couple points and because I get neck pain a lot from working over people and, you know, just getting into weird positions to try and like needle people and make them more comfortable. So I am contorting myself all day. So I'll come home with like a little headache or neck pain and you know he knows like he knows the three points on my neck and he just gets behind me on the couch and is pushing putting pressure on it and you know we're watching the olympics and you know there's it's not like there's a bunch of like crystals around and like we have healing music you know he's done this to me on planes where i'm like i, I can't move my neck and he's behind me just doing these points and then it's better but it's just yep. it's easy you know you don't need to bring a whole kit you don't need to yeah you don't need the the, the you don't music need the woo -woo. and the candles <laughs> yeah. and the shrine and the look if you have that all the power right. too that's awesome you right. know but most times like when you are really in pain it's a shitty situation yeah <laughs> you know like it's not like when the candles are lit it's like when you're on a 16 hour flight and you know you get a leg cramp which you just were you were when yeah. you were in australia yeah i did a yeah i did a kind of wild hair on my ass trip to australian bali um, but, and, and that, this is why I say that, especially like for the class too, but you know, we're on that long haul flight and I'm up and I'm like around the bathroom and you see people just 
holding their backs, holding their totally. hips. And I'm like, you know, this one guy must have been like 70 and he's just, he was in so much pain. And I was like, look, just prop your two hands up here and just relieve a little bit of that tension by like swinging your hip. And he was like, oh my God, you know, that's awesome. You know, I was like, okay, and then push this and push this. And he was like, that's great. And I was like, no, just get up and do that every four hours for the rest of the flight. And oh my God. you're good, you know? And he was, he was like kind of doubled over and then he went back to his seat and he was like, all right. You know, I could tell him, he seemed so to tell his wife. A, a friend of mine who's a fellow entrepreneur who, who I will not name was telling me he had serious uh, sciatica like I've had. And oh, it yeah. came to a head when he had to fly to Hong Kong and he couldn't sit yep. on the entire flight. And after that, he was like, I couldn't. Can't deal. I can't deal. Like yeah. 18, it's like 14 hours or yeah. 18 hours. Insane. And couldn't yeah. sit for the whole flight. He I'd was in so my, much pain. Yeah. He was like an exile, like tough guy. Like Right. So what are, are there, is there like a, a flying hack? Yeah, I mean, I have a flying hack, <laughs> but like it's... It depends on... How, you, yeah, like, where right. you're going, how long. I mean, I like... I like to pass the F out, right? Like I just... I, I, I'm not going to stay up and watch like 15 movies. Like I want to pass out. So... For the most part, I try and fly at night also because if you're sleeping or if you're in a deep meditative state, it's easier for your body to self-adjust oh, to the time zones and to traveling that quickly. Um, you know, I had I read somewhere that every time you go through a time zone faster than you can run, your body and your nervous system needs like, I think it's like four or six hours to adjust totally. to that time zone. So if you're going across, you know, the world and you just crossed a zillion time zones and all of a sudden you're on the next day like you want to do as many things as you can to try and set up your body to be supported so you can come out the other side and not just ruin three days of your vacation um so so what i like to do is definitely take night flights try and sleep as much as possible i do like sleepy time tea and then i'll do chinese herbs to like knock me out um I really like, there's a pure encapsulation is best rest formula as well as like you take four of those puppies, you're out. Mm-hmm. Like I like, you know, I'll look across from me, somebody's like popping a Xanax and I'm like, check, check this out. Cause we're, <laughs> we're going to sleep the same amount of time. So, um, so I would say that and then hydrate like crazy. Right. Cause you're under so much pressure. Like your tissue is, everything's being compressed. So the more that you can hydrate, the better you're going to feel on the other side because your body's not super dehydrated and feels like it's been in a pressure cook for 12 hours. So, you know, get the, get the aisle seat. Don't piss anybody off and have like two liters of water through the flight. That's the one thing I do pretty religiously. I drink so much water on That's flights. That's so good. Yeah. Everybody hates you when you get up, but <laughs> you feel great. <laughs> I'll, well, for me, aisle is must. Anything else yeah, is a actually, non-starter. Yeah, well, you're 18 I'm six, feet seven, tall. So. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, so we've got acupuncture and then acupressure is essentially yeah. that, no, this is good. It's this good. is ADHD. Everyone, everyone, <laughs> everyone flies. These are, these are important things to know. So acupressure essentially is human touch, yep. more accessible, yep. same meridian, same concepts. Let's walk through cupping and herbs so, quickly. Yeah, or, so cupping is, um, basically cupping is taking a glass cup uh, and you have, I mean, the, the more traditional version is having like a long, beautiful apparatus of metal that will attach kind of like a, a cotton swab or um, I think there's other just like lighting cotton. And then you dunk it in a bunch of alcohol and then you light it on fire and then it looks super scary. So usually you're really glad the person's face down. Um, and then you stick the fire in the cup and yep. it obviously eats up all the oxygen and creates suction. And then you quickly put the cup onto the person's back or skin or whatever. And then it kind of sucks the tissue up into the cup. And that sounds a lot more disgusting than it is. It feels incredible. Have you had cupping? Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. The tits. Like, it's yeah. so great. So you do all these cups on somebody's back. And then it's like a deep tissue massage. But instead of putting pressure on something to release it, you're suctioning up and allowing space between like all the muscle tissue and allowing for like more circulation, everything to get in there. So, you I mean, you look like you were attacked by an octopus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Afterwards. So like no black tie events, you know, on the other side. Um, but it's incredible. Like people, you can do it for, you know, colds and flus. You can do it for muscle aches and pains. Right. You it's do the it. Big re- it seems to me like a lot of professional athletes and you talked about Michael Phelps, the Olympics, yeah. James yeah. Harrison from the Patriots. There was a beautiful image of him in the Super Bowl doing it. Like, why do you think is it, do you think athletes gravitated for recovery and muscle tissue? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you think about it, it's like a, a really targeted way to get a ton of blood 
and circulation to one area. So if you're trying to rehab something, and athletes, as we know, kind of tear their bodies yep. down, right? So if you're trying to rehab something and it's like a chronic injury, like after the after a while, your body's going, okay, this isn't like an acute situation. You didn't just cut yourself, you know, your finger's not hanging from your body. Like it's a chronic thing. So it, it kind of slows down the chi in the area. So what you want to do with a chronic injury is is kind of really <laughs> aggressively and and yeah, like aggressively kind of bring the chi and the immune system back to that area so the body knows to like get in there and heal it again. Yep. So like cupping is perfect because it's like all of the blood is getting there as quickly as possible and that's where you get the marks. And what about herbs? Okay, so herbs... Oh my God. Was, so much. There's lots to say. Yeah, I was like, qu herbs quickly. 5,000 years of herbs quickly. Um, so Chinese herbs are... I mean, it's to me, it's it's hand in hand. I don't think that you can do incredible Chinese medicine miracles without the herbal side. Well, it's like a total, what I love about TCM, it's an integrated system. Yeah. It's like, you know, everything in one. It's it's your life, it's diet, it's every, it's, it's yeah. a true system. They have all, exactly, that whole tree of things. So acupuncture is like moving the energy and kind of like balancing any blockages in energy and helping your body recover that way. And then herbs is sort of the thing that you take home to elongate that treatment, reinforce what we are trying to solve in your health, you know, problem or, or heal with you. So like we'll do an herbal formula that's custom for someone. And in the acupuncture session, what we'll do is, you know, say that they need to move their liver chi. So they're like angry and stressed out all the time. So we're going to move the liver, liver. I don't know anybody in New York who's like that. So, you know, <laughs> if anybody has any recommendations, send them in. Um, so, yeah, you're going to kill somebody in the subway. Instead, you come to acupuncture. We move the chi. You feel more chill. And then the herbs you take home are kind of like reinforcing what we've done in the acupuncture appointment. So there's herbs in there to address the heat heat in the liver. There's herbs in there because the liver has been so active and has created all this anger and heat in your life. There's herbs in there to like cool down the like hyper acidity of the liver. There's herbs in there to calm and protect your heart from all of the heat and the craziness that the liver is. So it's like you have this, it's, it's very much like a recipe, you know, mm -hmm. it's like you and I can both make marinara sauce but they're going to taste totally different sure. because it's what they're what we're putting in it so it's the exact same thing with herbs like we're picking over thousands of herbs and putting together this unique combination to support what you're going through at that moment and that's why the other thing about herbs that i really want to convey to everybody is it's you don't have sort of one formula for life like it's not your multivitamin mm -hmm. okay so like if we're working with somebody who's you know has chronic anxiety you know, at first, maybe they have anxiety because, like, they're in a really stressful job and they can't quite, like, handle deadlines. Sure. And, like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, like, the first herbal formula is going to be, like, basically taking them off the ceiling yep. <laughs> and then putting them back in their body. And then the second herbal formula maybe will work a little bit more with, like, grounding and kind of nourishing their heart so they have, like, better sleep, which is going to set them up, again, for less anxiety during the day. So it's kind of like a little – you go through a little pathway with people as they heal because, you know, you're different from day to day, but especially as you're healing, your, your needs sure. are different. So that's what I love about herbs because they're, it's just such a beautiful way to address somebody's problems in life and, and, and that you, they're ever-changing and that you can, you know, give somebody a great acupuncture appointment – but then you can say, oh, you're going to the Bahamas for two weeks. Like, take these. You're going to, you know, be okay with your husband 24 hours a day. Sure. Um. <laughs> well, the great thing, too, I, I think I've never met anyone. I think this goes for a lot of practices, you know, yoga included, Chinese medicine. Like, I've never met anyone who, like, feels worse after a treatment. It's one of those things, like, totally. just just try it. Like, see yeah. how you feel. Like, if you feel worse, like, Le Frank Lippman, will, I'll reference him again. He's the same line of, like, removing gluten. I've never met anyone. It's not for everyone, but I've yeah. never met anyone who said they felt worse. Mm hmm so just see how it feels. So yeah. what do most people come to you for? You mentioned like stress. It's a big <laughs> thing. Like, you know, you're in New York. Like what are most think, people coming to see you for? Yeah. So that's like kind of the interesting thing is um, I think depending on where your practice is, you see different patients. And that's what I love so much about this medicine is that, you know, when I was seeing patients in San Diego, it was like stuff for you know, little bits of depression here and there and like, you know, diet and just kind of like tweaking stuff. Right. And then when I came to New York, it was like, I have chronic migraines. I have acid indigestion. I, you know, have like 
crazy insomnia and like the New Yorkers all have like the worst of the worst bag. And to me, I like to get in there. Like I like the tough stuff. Like I don't want to just kind of work gently. I want to needle and come back in 10 minutes and say you're done. Yeah, like exactly. <laughs> like if you, if your stress is due to, you know, your shoelace is not matching. Like there's, you know, a lot of people out there that will help you for that. But like, I want you to come in and be like, I have, you know, a brain tumor or like, and I'm actually working with a woman right now with, um, a brain tumor. And it's just so interesting because wow. so what's that like? That's, an, I mean, that's it's serious. That's yeah, it's really crazy. And it's, I think holding space is the best way I can kind of show up, you know, in that kind of a case. But so I'm assuming in a situation like that, like a lot of doctors will recommend actually the great thing about acupuncture and Chinese, but a lot of doctors embrace it. Like yeah, specifically, it's like, absolutely. you need to do both. You need, it's not like you can't just do TCM and you're going to be good. Like you right. need like real Western treatment, but you also need this. Yeah, totally. And I think a lot of things that we work with, with cancer patients is, um, you know, controlling the side effects from chemo, sure. you know, and, and helping after surgeries in recovery. But a lot of it right now is, um, calming nausea with chemo and getting appetite back. Also like yeah. making sure that there's, there's more sleep because there's so much pain, that kind of stuff. So that's like really heavy stuff, but yeah. you know, I love the fact that we can do stuff from, you know, we can treat things like bloating and then you know the next person does walk in with a brain tumor like there's mm -hmm. this medicine is so incredible like i'm so honored to be able to have it at my fingertips and like that's my toolkit um so i would say the majority of people don't walk in with a brain tumor but right. with in new york i would say it's it's a lot of it's a ton of stress just manifesting differently you where know? do most people manifest it um, it's always so i i have tell me my what i heard once and sort of my philosophy is it tends to hit you where you're weakest. Oh yeah, absolutely. So the cool thing is, this is like nerd moment, but I know you'll appreciate it. Um, in Ayurvedic medicine, they have something called a kavagunya, and I'm, I know I'm butchering that, but it's... Sounds good to me. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so this is, the idea of a kavagunya is like your, your weakest, it's like your Achilles heel, okay? And it's something that everybody, everybody has a different one, so whatever yours is will kind of constantly be something that you need to work with and tonify and support. Um, but it also, if you're run down, like that's your thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, some people it's neck pain. They're good, they're good, they're, they get under stress and like their neck goes out. And it changes too. It, yeah, it does change, but usually you'll see like, usually there's a pattern. Like I have, you know, patients that come every week and I know, like they walk in there, like it was a horrible week at work. And I'm like, I know we're working on your neck or it was a horrible week. So neck is work stress? Oh my God, yes. Think about it just like physiology wise, like people are at their desk, right? right. So like sitting is the new smoking plug. Yep. Um, <laughs> Big technology is the new smoking too. That's right, really... yeah. And so you're sitting there and you've got like a computer screen in front of you and then you're doing, I mean, you guys can't see me, but I've got, got my- You're hovering over and my like, shoulders. Yeah, crunch. my shoulders are in my ears and you're doing this and then you get an email from your boss and guess what? The deadline's been moved up and oh my God, your cat's sick. And it's just like, ah. yep. you just get wound up and then all of a sudden you're literally using your shoulders as earrings. <laughs> and so, you know, people will come in and it's like, no, I didn't throw it out in CrossFit. You know, my boss is a dick and, you right. know, my boyfriend and I just broke up. Right. <laughs> it's like, okay, let's, let's do your neck. You know, other people, this is, and I have a, a lot of women that are, that are dealing with this right now that we're working with in the practice. Um, it's bloating upon breathing. <laughs> like wow. they wake up in the morning and it's, you know, they even think of a blueberry and all of a sudden they feel like there's chronic bloating and they're like, I look like I'm four months pregnant. So what are some of the lifestyle practices you've learned from TCM? That well, The other thing, and I'm a big fan of TCM because I, what I love about TCM is definitely falls into this idea of it's a whole system and there's no one size fits all approach yeah, and you definitely. change and like it's fluid and it's not exclusionary, like with diet. Although, yeah. So like, what do you like about the lifestyle and what have you learned and what do you typically tell people about like they, they leave the table so to speak and they've got their herbs like what what are things you see and that you really like and speak to like the larger lifestyle component of buying into this yeah I mean I think and anybody who's come to me knows this or follows me on social media but like I am like I'm a warm food Nazi like yep. it's that is like the one of the biggest mm. things in Chinese medicine yep. is warm your effing food and like 
it's just, it is a game changer for health. Okay, so Chinese medicine, and I know there's like a raw food movement, and it's like, you I know, have smoothies like, every day. But that's fine, that's you know, like we're, you know, we're still gonna be friends. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but as far as like chronic, you know, long standing stress, if you're always having raw food or cold food, you're just making so much more work for your body. So I have sort of, because I'm a visual learner and I expect everybody else's to, I have this like really funny little analogy that kind of explains this, but are you familiar with the Keebler elf tree? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> usually most people are. So the Keebler elf tree is like where they make the cookies, right? So there's like four or five elves in there and they're like, you know, on one level of the tree, they're shoveling them into the fire and the other one, they're like taking the cookies out and like sprinkling them. And there's all these like happy little elves and they're like in a warm tree, right? And there's a lot of activity going on and everybody's like happy and warm and like wearing hats and stuff. So th- this is your digestive system, okay? <laughs> this is when it's happiest. So you have like the spleen and stomach and like they're warm and happy and food's coming down and they're like shoveling it into the fire and it's coming out processed and it goes through the small intestine and things get absorbed. And, you know, in Chinese medicine, like the small intestine sorts the pure from impure and everybody has a little function in this tree, okay? Right. So imagine if I throw a 28 ounce cold smoothie into the tree. What happens to the elves? Then they're like moving a little slower. They're not shoveling as well. (laughs) They're a little sad. Their mittens are sloppy and cold. Like they just move a little slower, right? And then maybe the next meal is like chicken and cooked broccoli and then they're moving a little quicker. But like what if you have like a cold smoothie and then kind of envision the elves being covered in smoothie and then you have like a salad and then like what do they do? Then they're also slow. And then for dinner, you're having like another salad. And then you're having ice cream. And what if you're having a cold shower in the morning too, which is like the other new thing that everyone wants. <laughs> Although I will say I do that. Okay. Oh yeah, I love it. Okay. Yeah. It's so Chinese. So, so too much bad. cold food. Yeah. Like it's just, it's a game changer for health. Like if you can just warm up, if you're having more than two cold meals a day, like your spleen is just so unhappy. It's, it's a sad Keebler elf tree. <laughs> so, Nobody so, wants that. So what about all the other stuff? We have all these amazing doctors in our world. We've been on the podcast and they'll talk, you know, some will lean more vegan, some more paleo, some are omnivore, some, you know, sugar's terrible, some gluten's terrible, yeah. some say gluten's fine, then beans, right. and we can go on and on. Totally. And so like what, what's like your, the TCM worldview and your opinion on all this stuff? <laughs> the TCM worldview. Um, you know, they really like meat. I mean, I'm not, this is not, you know, my personal beliefs, but I would say traditional Chinese medicine really likes you to have your meat and not even just like regular meat, but weird meat. They like you to eat chicken livers. Yeah. Yeah. They love that. You know, that's how we build blood in Chinese medicine. That's not your thing? No, I'm not like a huge chicken liver fan. (laughs) No, No. neither. I already have to like try and sneak vegetables into our dinner just so like my boyfriend who eats like an eight year old will eat it. So, (laughs) you know, trying to get chicken liver into something is going to be a battle I won't win. Um, But I would say that the blanket TCM diet would be um, lots of deep green leafy, like they do the whole color thing, right? So like you got to have the green on there, you got to have the white, you got to have purple, red. That's how they like to address each of the organs is through color on the plate. and then what I say to my patients is like, I'm, I'm not going to budge on the warm thing. Like if you want to have a smoothie in the morning, that's fine. But the other two meals need to be yeah, warm. Yeah. Um, and then beyond that, it's like really what works for you because I have the nutrition training too. So I'm not going to, I like kind of incorporating everything. I'm not just like, you know, sure. you must eat pork. Um, right. But I really like to look at like how somebody's body's responding and then tweak the diet from there. Because like you said, some people are fine with gluten and then some people are not fine right. with gluten. So. I don't, I don't think it's a good idea to like blanket state, you know, you must have this. We, we really work with it, every individual because that's what GCM is. It's who are you and what mm-hmm. do you need right now? So that's how we kind of corral diet. So something, uh, another life stage I'm guessing a lot of people come to you for is pregnancy. Oh, yeah. Women want to get pregnant or, or we are love pregnant. That. We love that. <laughs> Obsessed with fertility. Yeah. Obsessed. So right now, I would say probably 30% of the practice is fertility. And, you know, it's just an incredible, it's an incredible honor and gift to be able to take somebody who's looking to enter that stage of life and, you know, looking to give birth to another human being and say, yeah, like, let's, let's do this. Let's every week, you know, get in there and balance you out. And for the most part, I think that there's, and I, and I definitely want to have this on the record 
out in the ethers. But I think a lot of the like quote infertility scares and like the the worry that women have about pregnancy has to do with the psyche. Like there's so much of it that um, that is undue stress just because they've been to their OBGYN and they've shown them a chart that says like, you know, after 30, you're dying. Like your vagina, everything is dying. And it's just not like, you right. know, if you have a good balanced lifestyle and you can manage your stress, like it, it unless there's something really, really wrong, like it, it's not too much that we are seeing people that have some like horrible, you know, some dysfunction of a fallopian tube or something. A right. lot of time, like we're, working with fertility and just boosting the body and managing stress, you right. know? So I kind of wish they wouldn't show that chart off so easily. Right. Well, it's like a whole thing, a bedside manner with doctors and how right. you provide information, whether it's good or bad. That's a whole oh, science yeah. around that's, that's that. That's a whole different podcast, yeah. bedside manner. Yeah. I could smack, oh my God, <laughs> the amount of things I hear. I'm like, they told you what? <laughs> It's ridiculous. The thing I remember too, I love it. So Colleen, my wife, loves acupuncture and yeah. goes all the time and actually had a great session with you the other week. Yeah, great eight minutes. <laughs> great session. eight minute session. She's hey, like, I only have eight, eight minutes. Eight minutes is better than zero minutes. It's true. Uh, I remember when she was pregnant and about to give birth, I, I, they like told us there was like a couple pressure yeah. points for me to hold. I forget. They were like on her toe, yeah, I think. Yeah, on are the they? outside of her toe. Outside of her mm -hmm. pinky toe? Yep. That's like the point yeah. for inducing inducing yeah yeah what are the other like i i, I want to touch on so we've got the great point the l yeah la4 la4 yep. in between the thumb and yep. the index finger exactly. what are some of like the other like quick points that so the ones i would say like i call them like the partner points like the yep. things that your partner needs to know is li4 and then gb21 which is the point like right on the top of your shoulder let okay. me see if i can not bump so this and show you yeah, so it's like right in here. Okay, so it's like that in between your... It's, it's all right like on the top of your trap. Top of your trap, yeah. where everyone is like generally yeah, a little <laughs> sensitive. If you touch somebody at this point, they will melt and do anything you want. So it's a good like... So it's like a great rep. relationship point, you know? <laughs> like, oh, can we go away? It reminds me of sure? Star Wars or something. Like yeah, Darth yeah, Vader, yeah. Like, the Vulcan. The Vulcan yeah. neck ripper. Exactly, exactly, but instead of killing someone, you're just relieving some tension. <laughs> Are there any other good points? So that one I really love. And then if you follow up, like right up to the base of the skull, there are yep. actually like four points. But if you follow kind of on either side of your spine, the two muscles into kind of where they go into your head. It's kind of where they do Shavasana and yoga. Sort yeah. Sort of around that area. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, so if you go into the base of the skull and just kind of palpate any of the points around there, they just, it's your immediately relax like it acts on the central nervous system it releases the musculature there everybody has a sore neck i've never ever ever put my hands on somebody and they're like yeah you know what my shoulders don't really bother me like, it's never <laughs> happened so so what are some of the biggest misconceptions about tcm and specifically acupressure so let's see misconceptions i would say i mean i would say acupressure acupuncture it, mainly that it hurts like people are just it's the first thing i get constantly is, does it hurt yeah. and i'm like no it doesn't hurt mm -hmm. you know if people i have babies i have like elderly people coming you know it, it's it's not something i always say that if it hurt people wouldn't come back every week you know what i mean <laughs> they just wouldn't like it would be a one time let's do this and we're done um so it's like a sensation sometimes it's like pressure sometimes it feels like tingling but it's not holy shit that's painful right. it's, usually, it's a good feel even when it's like a little weird it's flickery, it, it, flickery yeah. it, it's still a good feeling it's like wow something's, something's happening Something's happening exactly and that's good yeah. when you don't feel anything that's not good <laughs> i mean but some it depends on like the treatment too because sometimes right. you're doing like a subtle emotional treatment and so you'll use needles in a technique that like you just like are, are they in like yep. what's, you know, what's happening here. Um, but then you'll do like an orthopedic treatment. Like if I have athletes come in, you know, I'm doing trigger points and like sports med stuff. And like that's, that's, you're going to feel that, you know, that's, I want that little fasciculation of the muscle. I want that little twitch because it means the muscle motoprotein is just like releasing. Sure. So it's feedback from the body. So we have an amazing class with you yeah. on acupressure. So why, tell us, tell people a little bit about the class and why everyone needs to pick it up if they aren't. I think it's pretty obvious. There's so much. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, like the ability to do this stuff at home with like your partner is just sort of like the gift that keeps on giving forever. And that's, that's so, <laughs> it's so true. It's so this, get this for your partner, make them watch or it. just yourself <laughs> when you're traveling, all these little mm-hmm. things, like real world practices. Yeah. So this is, this is kind of what I compiled was the best of my, what I call emergency kit acupressure. So like, you know, you're in the forest or you're in a car, you're on a plane, like where are you where the pain is just unbearable and you need a little relief and it needs to happen now without like your crystals and your, you know, seance and your lighting and your sage. So, you know, you can just do it with your hands. It's super easy. And, you know, we just kind of picked body parts that people have chronic pain. So we have like a whole section for hips and sciatica. And I mean, for women, that's uh, so many women, just live in unbearable sciatic pain. Sure. Well, men too. Like lower yeah. back pain is like what draws the numbers are for yoga are insane. That's what yeah. drew me to yoga. It's like totally. It's, it's everyone. It's huge. Yeah. So the men, I would say, is more like I see a lot more men in lower back pain, and then whip it, women at sciatica. But but I think that you know f- to have a protocol that's easy and just like a couple points that you or a partner can do. You know, if you're camping and you're in a ton of pain or like on a plane and somebody can just grab you and go through this quick protocol. Or and in then, like a bad taxi cab or subway where yeah, you're like ready to kill, kill someone. Kill everyone. <laughs> well, that's a different class. How not to kill people on the subway. <laughs> we'll follow up with that one. Um, but yeah, I think it's just a great emergency toolkit on how to relieve pain in situations where you may not have time to get somewhere or do something. And it's, you know, if you do it over and over again, you're going to start alleviating some of that pain. So it's incredible knowledge to have. And, you know, I went to school for eight zillion years. So you guys should just reap the benefits of not having to do that <laughs> and learn Chinese and all of that stuff. So seeing where TCM is today and where it was you know, when you first got into this, like what's exciting to you? Like for one thing, I know the science is like caught up in a huge way and you have like so many more Western doctors or functional medicine doctors being like, you know what you need, like, I you, you, need, you, need, you need this stuff. Yeah. So like what's exciting to you? Where do you think things are going? I just love that it's not so much mm-hmm. voodoo anymore. Like you said, yeah. like it's coming to the forefront. I mean, it's been here since the 70s. Like it's it's been, you know, in America, but it's it was looked at as like witch doctor stuff, yeah. you know? And it was just like if I said whatever, how many years ago I was in school, you know, I'm going to school for acupuncture. It was like, oh, I love this one. Oh, is that massage? And I'm like, no, it's acupuncture. Like I'm going to school for four years. Like I'm not, you know, just going to give you a massage. Like we can work on hepatitis. Like it's a little different. And um, so just seeing the difference in the questions that I'm getting now, because it's, it's more, you know, widely accepted. And like you said, like the functional medicine guys know about it. Everybody's kind of referring to everybody else. So I'm excited for it to be even more of a household thing. I'm excited for, you know, my patients when they say, oh, I go to acupuncture every week. Somebody knocked to go, like, why? Like, what? Like, what? What do you do it for? <laughs> you know, it, it to not be such a weird talking piece and be more like, oh, this is part of my health team. You know, just yeah. like every woman's like, oh, I have a facial every month or every three months or, you know, once a year or whatever. I have my therapist. I, you know, you should really, I always say, like, it takes a village to heal a person. Totally. You should have a team. And it, does it mean that you're going to every single one of these people every week? No. Like, you know, nobody has the time or not everybody has the resources. Sure. But just having it on hand so that you know that if, you know, you do have a back spasm that – you you have your acupuncturist in your back pocket or until you get to your acupuncturist you have your acupressure class in your back pocket and you know how to alleviate that so that's what i'm excited for so if you could go back in time and give advice to young Paige when she was uh (laughs) entering uh school what advice would that be i would say i mean when i was entering school for TC, entering school for, for all the letters after your name. Right. Oh, my God. So that would be very <laughs> early. Um, I would say, don't worry. This is going to be a thing. <laughs> because back then I was like, I don't know. I'm just doing what I'm interested in. We'll see. Because everybody seems to think it's crazy. Um, I would say chicken wings are not a meal. There was a large <laughs> number of years in my 20s that I would have chicken wings for my whole But they're life. hot. I know. They're hot. They're like hot. It's... So what else can you have with, with chicken wings? <laughs> well, I was Some old... dark green vegetables? I mean, I was having like Hooters chicken okay, wings. Yeah, are, like okay. I'm not like baking them and praying over them and putting like, you know, a lovely slaw next to them. Okay. It was it was Hooters. Um, <laughs> and um, I would also say, you know, just believe in yourself a little bit more. I think that a lot of 
when I was getting into this stuff, it was still, everything was still woo woo. And I was like thinking maybe this would just be something that I did sort of, you know, when I was like a a wife just on the side to Mm -hmm. kind of, you know, see if I was interested in it and like have a couple patients a week. And now it's like, you know, a full blown practice in the middle of New York city. Like I, I wish I would have believed in myself a little earlier probably. Um, and then don't tattoo everything you think is meaningful <laughs> on your body. <laughs> Just stop at the lower How back. How many tattoo. tattoos do you have? Oh my God. I have eight now. Oh wow. Yeah. Like it's, it's a bit much. Um, my parents weren't around a lot as a child. <laughs> so, um, and I'm getting like four removed and oh, wow. yeah, but I was, I was that like spiritual wild child that was like, no, it really means a lot to me to have God in Sanskrit on my wrist because that's where I feel God come through my life. You know, I, somebody needed to take me aside and be like, just, you know, put it up in your wall in your room, like <laughs> paint, do a poem about it. <laughs> so what keeps you up at night and what has you excited every morning? Hmm. What keeps me up at night would probably be, I have the, I have the, the issue with constantly running through my day and seeing, thinking of what I could have done better, you know? So it's in a way, in a weird way, because I'm also flying a million miles a minute, I'm a perfectionist, but only in the way that I like treat patients, if that makes sense. So like, you know, the house is a little messy. I've got like two dogs. One runs around in a wheelchair and like poops everywhere. Oh, and that was your dog? That yeah. Was I was like, whose dog is that? Okay. <laughs> Who brought that little mischief No, it was maker? like, it's so cute. Yeah. yeah. She's, a, yeah, she's crazy. So she's in a wheelchair and, you know, she's a lot of work, but we love her. And, and so that life kind of moves at this crazy pace, but when I'm with a patient, it slows down and I'm trying to make sure I'm as present as possible and giving them every every part of all of the words behind my name that I can give them. Sure. And so when I go to sleep at night or try and go to sleep, I'm thinking, you know, oh, wow, you know, I should have definitely told her, like, don't do the blueberries in the morning, do them, like, in the afternoon, or, like, don't take magnesium too close to your Chinese herbs, or, like, oh, maybe if I flipped, you know, this protocol, we could have accessed this, too. Like, there's a lot of going over what I've done in the day and just kind of like obsessing. <laughs> Isn't that what makes you great though? Yeah. I feel like everyone has that a little bit who's any good. Like, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I think that's the poetic way to say it. But then you look like my boyfriend's like 11 o'clock at night. He's like, but just put it down, shut it off. Like, Sure. Well, that's important know. too. It's that blend right. of like being able to compartmentalize and put away for now. Totally. And then realize and then come back to it later. Yeah, I'm not good at the compartmentalizing, <laughs> but I think like at the end of the day, all I hope for is that I've made somebody's day like a little better and a little more special. And if I don't think I could have done that to the the level of my expectation, then there's like a, a lot of self berating. <laughs> sure. And what has you excited in the morning? The, the kind of the same thing to to see if I can do things better. Yep. Every single day, if I'm not growing or doing something better, I want to know why and how. I've got an insatiable curiosity and like I just love grabbing knowledge and anything that's new in my world. So. What can I do better? What tools can I use? How can I grow? How can I be better than I was yesterday? I, lo- I love that. I love that hunger, getting up in the sure. morning and being like, I'm going to have a better day than yesterday. Amen to that. Right? Well, everyone, check out Paige's class on Mind, Body, Green, Acupressure. Pressure. Bring Yay. it into your life. Do it. <laughs> Thank you so much for being no here. No problem. Thank you for having me. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>